So last Friday, the platform fights began. Uh, so normally a DNC uh, chair uh, picks all the people that are going to go on the platform committee, the establishment wins on all these things. Now it doesn't mean that there aren't any liberal positions, there are uh, in the DNC party uh, platform, Democratic Party part platform. This year was a little different and give credit to the DNC because Bernie Sanders made such a strong showing they allowed him to have five representatives on that platform committee and on Friday they uh, fought and they and they won on some issues. Now on other issues they didn't win. Some of this was very expected and and some a little bit better than expected. That's interesting. But of course a profound disappointment at the end. Which about summarizes the Democratic Party. So and now by the way there are far more than five obviously so uh, I think about 15 people on the platform committee, five from Hillary Clinton and also five from the chair, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. So it's actually 10 to 5, 2 to 1 stacked against the Sanders people, but at this point he doesn't have as many pledged delegates. So uh, I certainly understand that and it is better than what they normally do. Okay, so uh, now let's take a look at what uh, progressives might have won on because of the, that said Sanders advocacy. Um, in fact, ABC News explains reflecting Sanders advocacy, uh, the platform also calls for an expansion of Social Security and says Americans should earn at least $15 an hour, referring to the current minimum wage of $7.25 an hour as a quote star starvation wage, a phrase the Vermont senator often uses. Okay, so there, there's a win right there. Uh, the $15 minimum wage I've been telling you for months, that's, that's going to be the easiest one to give to the Sanders camp. Uh, they're not going to want to give you much uh, more than that. But as expected, they say, oh sure, sure, we'll go to $15. We'll try for $15 and see what happens. Uh, and at least they call it a starvation wage. It's just a matter of language. But the platform is a matter of language and ideas. It's not like Democrats have the platform and then as soon as you have a Democratic president, they're like, okay, this is exactly what I'm doing. But it, this kind of symbolism to push the party towards what is actually the American center is wonderful. And look, uh, you know, calling for an expansion of Social Security, that's also a really good step forward in the right direction and the fact that the, he has brought the Democratic Party there is great. All right, more wins. The committee also adopted language that said it supports a variety of ways to prevent banks from gambling with taxpayers' bank deposits, including an updated and modernized version of Glass-Steagall. Now, don't get too excited. Uh, Hillary Clinton is still against uh, reinstating Glass-Steagall, which says that the bankers cannot gamble with depositor money. Now that's what was in place for 40 years, kept uh, banking very reliable and solid, especially by historical standards. Then Bill Clinton, as he was leaving, said, nah, no, they can gamble with your money. Now Hillary Clinton still says they can gamble with your money, but at least they put into the platform, yeah, I guess it sucks that they can gamble with your money. Maybe we'll do something about it someday. <laughs> Within the Democratic Party, these are what we call wins. Okay, now, um, more from ABC News. In some cases, Clinton's side gave ground to Sanders. The panel proved language calling for the abolition of the death penalty, calling it a cruel and unusual form of punishment which has no place in the nation. Clinton said during a debate earlier this year that it should only be used in limited cases involving, quote, heinous crimes, while Sanders said the government should not use capital punishment. So there's an unexpected victory and a good one. Again, it's not, it doesn't affect uh, economic interests that much, so it's not that painful for the Democrats who take all the donor money. Oh, capital punishment. Okay, sure, liberals will be against capital punishment in all cases, including heinous crimes, as Hillary Clinton said. Uh, it's not much of a victory, but I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, that's that's great, and and so the uh, the party becomes more progressive. Okay, uh, and even Bernie Sanders said it. He said. These are, quote, very, very important victories. Great. Now, let us tell you about the defeats. Because they're not going to let you in on the major economic issues. That's where the money is, Lebowski. So, uh, working into the evening, ABC News explains the panel narrowly rejected amendments offered by environmentalist Bill McKibben, a Sanders supporter, that would have imposed a tax on carbon and imposed a national moratorium on fracking. So that's where they were like, oh, oh man, should we, shouldn't we? Uh, let me see, are we still making money from fracking and some of that money is getting funneled to us? Yes, we should, yes, we should continue fracking. So none of that national moratorium, but oh, we were really split on it. Okay, uh, and then here are more undoable things. A final discussion centered on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The committee defeated an amendment by Sanders supporter James Zogby that would have called for providing Palestinians with an end to occupation and illegal settlements and urged an international effort to rebuild Gaza. 
Zogby said Sanders helped craft the language. So Bernie Sanders, the most successful Jewish presidential candidate of all time, saying, um, he, of course he loves Israel, he's got family living in Israel, he used to live in Israel, but I also love the Palestinians, we should have a two-state solution, and we should end the illegal settlements. And they're like, no, 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 I don't think so. No, no, your background in this one case doesn't matter at all, your opinions don't matter, no. Uh, we, we've got other people telling us that uh, we should support Israel come hell or high water, and this whole even-handedness stuff. I mean, we'll talk about two-state solutions, and we'll put that on the platform, that's cute, right? But going and saying the settlements are illegal and you should end the occupation, bridge too far. So that's not going to happen either. Uh, now, uh, Bernie Sanders acknowledges that there uh, is more work to do. He said, we have made some good gains, uh, but we have more to do. Um, now, let's get to uh, the heart of what went wrong, though, and why this is actually a reason that, that some of the people that are against the Democratic Party and against Hillary Clinton and the establishment give us a reason not to vote for Hillary Clinton. So this is very interesting. Listen here. ABC News says Democrats on Friday voted down an amendment to the party's platform that would have opposed the Trans Pacific Partnership trade deal, avoiding an awkward scenario that would have put its statement of values at odds with President Barack Obama. See, guys like Jimmy Dore, who are on our show, say, Look, if it's George W. Bush, we fight him and we win. He tried to privatize Social Security. All the Democrats got together, fought against him, we won. Uh, but when President Obama comes in and he says, no, 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 don't fight, uh, all the Democrats stand down. So I'll increase taxes a tiny bit on the rich, but I'll take uh, the giant tax cuts that President Bush had, and he couldn't make them permanent. I'll make them permanent. I'll make 94% of that revenue loss permanent, and, and the rich will get to keep it. And the Democrats don't fight. So in a case like this, if you had a Republican president say, yeah, let's go for TPP, a lot of Democrats would fight. In fact, Hillary Clinton claims that she's against the TPP. Bernie Sanders is certainly against TPP. And now, even though both of the major candidates, almost 100% of the vote was against the Trans-Pacific Partnership because it gives away too much power to corporations, all of a sudden in the platform, no, they're not against the TPP. What did I tell you? Didn't I tell you from day one, oh, they'll give you $15 minimum wage, but there's no way there's gonna, that they're not going to do the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Once Hillary Clinton gets in, she will rubber stamp that so quick it'll make your head spin. And here it is in the platform. They can't even put it in the platform. Who cares? You could put it in the platform and she could you know, go back against it anyway, but they won't even do that. Donors don't get us wrong. We are definitely for the TPP no matter what BS we say in public. And what do they use as an excuse? Well, look. The head of the Democratic Party is President Obama. Now, we wouldn't want to embarrass him. Well, then you're saying if I elect a Democrat, it's going to be harder to fight for corporatist, harder to fight against corporatist positions that the Democrats support. And that is a truth. It's an uncomfortable truth. Now, that doesn't mean you should vote against Hillary Clinton, but it is a factor. So the, I'm giving you all the different, the good side, the bad side. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, look, one more note on that. ABC News also said on trade, Obama has promoted the TPP despite opposition from rank and file Democrats. Members of the panel said it would be wrong to undercut the outgoing president in the platform. First of all, no, it wouldn't. Who cares? So, oh, oh, I should bow down to the authority figure. That's what a progressive does. That's what a liberal does. Oh, it's the president. Dear leader, I bow down to you. He's on his way out anyway. Yes, he's a corporatist. Deal with it. Sad day for you. No, but the problem is that the people making that decision, the majority of them, are also corporatists, and they use that as an excuse. But what they don't realize is they're sending you a message. You vote for another Democratic corporatist, and you won't even have anyone to fight for you. That is a terrible message to send. Now, I do want to go back to Bernie Sanders because he does end on a, on a high note. He says, we lost some, it's a high note for us, it won't be for the rest of the Democrats. We lost some very important fights. We're going to take that fight to Orlando, where the entire committee meets in two weeks. And if we don't succeed there, then we'll certainly take it to the floor of the Democratic Convention. Now that's the kind of talk that the Democratic Party hates and that I love. Because it isn't a fight for no reason. It isn't a Bernie or bust. It isn't even about this election. It's bigger than that. Who are you? What do you stand for? And no, we are never going to bow our heads. So if that makes you uncomfortable, Democratic Party and the establishment, screw off. 
I couldn't care less. Go ahead and cry about it all day. Like, why won't you fall in line? This is why we won't fall in line, because we don't agree with you. The Trans-Pacific Partnership would allow major corporations to sue us and overturn labor laws, uh, environmental laws, maybe even minimum wage laws. So you cost me profits. I was going to make a lot more profits if I got to pollute your rivers. I'm taking you to an international court and there's not a goddamn thing you could do about it. And by the way, that international court is stacked with lawyers who might one day work for me or who worked for me earlier. Gee, I wonder if they'll be biased. So no, we don't agree and hence we will fight you. Now that doesn't mean I vote for Donald Trump. I know they're so binary. They're just so limited. They're just like this. You know, they talk about the horse race. You know how they put blinders on a horse? Who are you voting for? Who are you voting for? Is it Hillary or Donald? Hillary or Donald? No, I'm fighting for ideas. Open up your mind. I know it's really, really hard for the mainstream media, the both of the parties and the establishment. But sad day for, for you. No matter who you vote for, we fight for ideas and we fight for them to the end. So if you have to fight for that on the convention floor, even if the optics are bad, oh, but are you hurting our candidate? Don't hurt our candidate. No, our candidate would support progressive positions. This is a candidate, and if we don't agree with them on the specifics, you're goddamn right we'll fight them.